Well, hello there, and welcome to this episode of Why Something Fails, and today we're talking all about religious upbringing. Uh, joining me to discuss this is my good friend Nick, who again has uh, very kindly offered to do another presentation. So that's enough of me for the moment. Uh, over to you, Nick. Hi there. So today we're talking about uh, a thing that is actually a continuation of our previous uh, chat. Uh, we talked about why religion morality fails. And uh, we argued that religious mor morality, actually any morality, is based primarily on what we were told and what we were taught by our parents, by uh, the, the people who brought up us from the very early age. And uh, we have a lot to say about uh, upbringing. And because religion, re religious morality fails uh, and uh, morality is given to us by our parents, it's uh, logical to uh, investigate more why why the upbringing uh, of uh, children is problematic uh, when this upbringing is very deeply intertwined with religion. So lately I've been uh, chatting and having conversations with different people and uh, many times I see really, really strange things when people uh, are unable to uh, to go seemingly easy logical path and uh, to do seemingly easy mental exercises and uh, this reminds me uh, a very interesting phenomenon called learned helplessness learned he helplessness is 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 demonstrated uh, in the best way by elephants when a person wants to tame an elephant, uh, he needs to uh, deal with this elephant from a very early age of the elephant. People tie uh, an elephant in a chain and the elephant from the early age learns that uh, he cannot break, th uh, break away from this chain. And then when, when the elephant is already adult, uh, he can be tied by a very little rope and he just doesn't uh, have an idea that he can break away from this rope. And moreover, he even uh, feels threatened when there is no rope and he doesn't feel comfortable. Uh, so things that are put into our minds and into our souls that are scripted into us in the very early age are very very powerful and they are very very limiting in very many many uh, cases and uh, this uh, bothers me and this uh, really deprives people a lot of uh, things and re religious education and uh, uh, bringing children in re very religious uh, environment uh, imposes a lot of uh, learned helplessness on children I've seen many people uh, saying lately that uh, being religious they constantly feel guilty and uh, they are bringing uh, the religious idea is that we are uh, not worthy, we are God's slaves, we are filthy, we are dirty, our thoughts are dirty, our body is dirty. Uh, sex is dirty, uh, childbirth is dirty, this all is around the original sin and people keep living uh, miserable lives and sometimes they uh, feel uh, happy but deep inside they, they don't feel adequate, they, they resist change, they re resist uh, other people's influences and just because they have a lot of uh, things uh, scripted deeply in them and also uh, the limiting, limiting things are that thinking is bad, uh, challenging other uh, opinions is bad uh, and as a result we have a very passive, very, very often a stubborn person who is very uh, difficult to deal with and who is very limited in what he or she can achieve in his life. 
uh, as opposed to uh, that, uh, we can uh, change this. Uh, even if you are a religious person, you can add more uh, secular, more r reasonable uh, things into the upbringing of your child. Uh, we have to script our children saying that they are beautiful, they are wonderful, the way they are. We love them unconditionally. Uh, whatever their views uh, are, uh, whatever their approach to life is, we can give them values and we have to teach them that uh, they are responsible uh, for, for their lives. They should be uh, active, uh, they have to change things that are bad and they can uh, help other people. Um, and uh, in this way we can bring a, a, a person being proactive, being uh, very self-confident uh, and a person who can help others and uh, bring something really good to, uh, to the world, like developing new drugs, like uh, earning a lot of money and then spending it uh, w with charity. We, we have very powerful brains uh, and we can use them in, in full if we're not uh, li uh, scripted with those limits. So, uh, to maximize the, the potential of a child, uh, we, we should teach uh, a child values of proactiveness. Uh, we should teach that knowledge and truth are one of the highest uh, things that uh, are available to us as human beings. It's very helpful to teach skepticism because if we don't teach skepticism, a child has problems with distinguishing lies from truth. A child has no solid ground to test any hypothesis or to test anything that is sold to a person uh, by anyone. Uh, as a result, many religious people keep switching from church to church uh, and uh, trying different ideas and they don't have a, a, a very concrete way to, to distinguish what, what is right and what is wrong. Also a very important value is self-improvement. Uh, we should understand that we can change, we can be uh, an active influence on our lives. Uh, we, can, we should be searching for knowledge, we should be uh, trying to read as many books, as uh, many different opinions as, as we can, and then uh, being uh, adult, being uh, mature, we can decide for ourselves, we can judge for ourselves, and we always uh, have to be skeptical towards our own opinions, towards our own paradigms, and we have to be ready to change our mind on, on things provided the evidence uh, leads us to changing our mind. If, uh, if we're still a religious household, we have to be honest to our child that there are other re religions, there are competing ideas, and uh, we have to first fam familiarize ourselves with different uh, religious ideas. Try to f search truth in other uh, religious ideas and try to look uh, from a global perspective. And obviously we have to teach our child that there are other religious ideas and uh, they uh, just come from different parts of the world, from different cultures. And uh, I, I, I believe that p in those parents who protect their children from competitive, uh, competitive ideas do a lot of harm to their children. And, uh, you know, wh when you tell your child uh, there is this approach, they have this idea, th this is what is good with their religion, then your child w may, may still keep uh, your faith or they may choose another faith, or they may choose a, an agnostic position, or they may choose a, a deist position. And I, I encourage religious people to love their uh, children unconditionally, whatever their approach to, um, to re religion and to uh, the belief is. Sometimes people, uh, religious people say, okay, if you're this uh, physical, if, if you bring your child 
in, in this scientific view of, of the world, your child will not uh, have uh, childhood. You deprive uh, your child. And from my uh, experience, I have a four years old child. Uh, it's not true at all. Uh, it, it, children enjoy uh, books, it, children enjoy fairy tales. Uh, as, as much uh, if you tell them that they are imaginary. Children are children and they will still play, they will still enjoy and they will explore much more if, if they can understand what's imaginary and what's real. And believe me, in the real world there are so many things uh, to be in awe, in awe about and uh, to excite imagination of a child. For example, uh, you can tell uh, realistic uh, stories. I re uh, some time ago I changed my mind. Now I uh, tell my daughter, four years old daughter, uh, real uh, stories at bedtime uh, ab about uh, farming ants, about uh, even the cosmic cloud uh, which uh, rotates and condenses and uh, a solar system appears and uh, planets appear. And it takes the same amount of imagination from a child to imagine this as uh, to imagine sometimes very crazy and cruel uh, fairy tales, the traditional ones about uh, big, uh, mean giant or, or stuff like that. And I thought, well, why don't I just use this precious time when we are so close at bedtime to, uh, to tell the child something wonderful about the real world? And uh, now I, I, cannot I cannot believe how clever uh, she is already at, at four years old, how clever her questions are, how much she knows already. Also, uh, a big um, area where I, I believe uh, religious upbringing uh, does a lot of harm to children is uh, educating them about marriage and about sex. Uh, religious are bringing uh, scripts a lot of bad things about guilt, about uh, uh, sex being dirty, about n nudity being dirty, and other things uh, that uh, provoke guilt in, in children. And uh, then these children grow up and they don't know what to do with uh, uh, their spouses, they don't know what to do with uh, their uh, Sexu sexual partners because there is a chasm, there is a huge gap between the real life and uh, between what is uh, scripted and what is told in in uh, those uh, church meetings. And this is supported by evidence. Uh, for example, in the United States, those states which are more religious, there are more, uh, much more uh, teen pregnancy uh, occurrences, there are much more uh, divorces than in those states, uh, states that are more secular where the, uh, more things like gay marriage and gay rights and uh, sexual freedom is more uh, encouraged. I believe this is because uh, children and, and, and population in general are much uh, better equipped in, te in terms of knowledge uh, about things uh, and we have to speak about real things. What, what difficulties arise in marriage? How difficult or how challenging it is to ge get along with a person for many years? Uh, how difficult it is to bring, a, bring and uh, upbring a child? And uh, children do understand it from the very early age too. Uh, you, ha you don't necessarily need to tell everything in details, uh, for example, I about sex. But you have to be honest and straight and you uh, have to, uh, for example, I have a nine months old son and my older daughter is, is ready. She loves uh, her br uh, little brother and she understands how difficult sometimes it is for the parents to uh, be with this li little child. She uh, uh, helps us uh, raising this little child and she uh, uh, thinks a lot of how she will be adult and uh, in terms of how her own family will be built. And I believe it's very uh, helpful for, for the children.
Uh, I've, I've got a lot of inspiration from uh, reading about the life of uh, Richard P. Feynman. He had a very interesting father who was bringing him uh, in a, a scientific uh, worldview. He was teaching him how the world worked, how, for example, the e ecosystem of a forest works, that uh, everything that dies uh, goes as a food to something else. Uh, and I believe it's very, very valuable to go out with a, with your child to read some uh, articles in uh, uh, National Geographic magazine or similar magazines, and not to not to spend time on useless stories or cartoons, but uh, use your precious time with your child on on something that reflects real nature and real world. It, it makes you closer to your child, it makes your child closer to the world, uh, it uh, grows altruistic. It, and that's the way I also was brought up and my father gave me knowledge uh, and my father gave me a uh, very deep appreciation of nature and o of life in general. And I recommend reading uh, several books about Richard Feynman uh, particularly. And uh, generally Everything that I advocate here, that I'm saying here, is a, a, a challenging task because when a child comes up with a question, with a really deep question, you should never answer things like you are too little to understand. You have to formulate in a language that would be understood by a child and that's challenging. That's a very interesting and powerful mental exercise for yourself, but it's very, very, very rewarding. And uh, we should never lie to children about Sa Santa Claus, about other uh, things. Uh, I, I re repeat, uh, the children will, will be not deprived. They will still enjoy Santa Claus stories or other stories when they know that they are imaginary. Uh, we should uh, emphasize that imagination is very important to our children, but we should uh, teach them to distinguish between uh, imagination and real world and real facts from the very early age. That was uh, it for, from my side and uh, I will be glad to discuss with you, I will be glad to discuss in the comment section and now in the hangout uh, and thanks for your attention.